Hi folks, in this video we'll be looking at how to design and build electronic circuits on Stripboard, also known as Veroboard. We'll be using a program called DIY Layout Creator to help us with our design. Stripboard allows you to quickly and easily create small to medium sized projects and prototypes like this one, using standard through hole components. It does not require etching, like a printed circuit board, or any specialized tools. So, strip board is essentially a resin based board perforated with holes with spacings of 0.1 inches, which allows for easy insertion of most through hole components. It has strips of copper on the underside of the board that run horizontally. These strips make connections between components and greatly reduce the amount of wires that are needed to build the circuit, as they act just like the wires or tracks would do. To build a circuit on stripboard, we need to convert the original circuit diagram, like this for example, into a layout diagram. Layout diagram is a bit like an aerial photograph of what the circuit board should look like once it's built. It is a view from above that shows where each of the components will be located on the board and any of the connections between them. For this video, we will design the layout for a simple LED flasher circuit that uses a 555 timer. OK, so here's that circuit diagram again for the circuit we're going to build. This shows us how the components are connected electrically, but in reality the components often look a lot different, and it can be hard to know exactly how to connect them up. This is where our layout diagram comes in. Although you can draw these by hand, I find it much easier to use DIY Layout Creator as it is easy to move objects around in your design and do things like resizing your board. To place components on the board, first make sure the copper strips are on the underside of the board, and then you can just position the components wherever you like on the top side and push the pins or leads through the holes. Here you can see the pins from this chip socket coming through on the underside. We can see here that each of these pins is connected to a track, and each of these tracks runs all the way across the board. Now when you're designing your circuit or your layout, the strips should run horizontally across the board. Essentially, each track uh, is available for each one of these pins, but there is an issue here. When we have something like a, an integrated circuit or chip, um, we have pins on each side of the chip. And if you look here, we can see that there are copper tracks running all the way across the chip. So each pin, in this case, would be connected together. So we have to bear that in mind when we're putting uh, chip sockets into the board. And what we have to do is basically cut out the track uh, in each one of these cases here to make sure that each of these pins are not actually connected together. So um, if we look at this example, this is where a board uh, has a chip in it. It's a, an 8-pin chip, and each of the tracks had to be cut just by using a 3mm drill bit just to cut away enough of the copper to stop the connection. You don't want to drill too far or you'll end up going down through your board. By the way, these can be drilled by hand. You don't need to use a power drill. Just use a drill bit in your hand and just gently uh, scrape away at the copper. OK, so if you haven't already got DIY Layout Creator, you can download it from GitHub. I'll leave uh, the address in the description below. It's available for Mac OS and Windows. So once you've installed that, we can then open up DIY Layout Creator and get started. OK, so I've opened DIY Layout Creator. The next thing we need to do is select a board uh, to build our circuit on. So if we click Boards, we can then select a Vero board, and then we can place the board uh, on our screen. Now, the board is going to need to be a little bit bigger, but first I'm going to zoom in on it. So to do that, you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in, and it makes the board jump around a bit. But if you don't, if you don't have that option, just go to Config, and just check to make sure the mouse wheel zoom is set there. Then you can just use the scroll bars to move the board to where you want it to be. 
So I'll just move it over a little bit. Now it needs to be a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to click the board. And I'm going to drag this little green dot here a little bit. And maybe just a little bit more. And then it this way. Okay, so now we have a board that should be big enough to build a circuit onto. Now you can see at the top of the board, the columns are given a number and each of the copper strips are given a letter on the left hand side. By the way, the copper strips on the board are represented by these brown lines and might give the impression that they are on the top side of the board. They are, however, intended to be on the underside of the board. So even though they look like they are on the top, they are only shown here so that you can see what is connected to them more easily. When you're inserting components into your board, you insert them on the plain side of the board so that their pins stick out on the side of the board with the copper strips. Another way to look at it might be if you imagine that the board that you're looking at is actually transparent and so you can see through it and so you can see the copper strips on the other side. Okay, so let's bring our circuit diagram into the picture. I find it makes sense to start by placing the components that have the most connections first, such as the 555 timer in this case. I'm going to place it roughly in the center of my board, and from there I will figure out where to put the remaining components. So to put in our chip, what we need to do is go to semiconductors, and then if we scroll down we can find DIP IC, that's dual inline package integrated circuit. So we click this and then we can move it around. Okay, and we can see that we can, it kind of snaps to the grid. So if we position it uh, roughly about, uh, let's say here. Okay, it's close to the center of our board. And then we can start positioning other components around it. Now we can also edit this uh, integrated circuit. So if we right click on it, and we select edit selection we can change the number of uh, pins that it has so in this case it has eight we could change it to you know one of many so we could have a 22 pin one we can do that and get a much bigger chip okay but we're just going to change that back to eight and then we can also change the name so i'm just going to put 555 because it's a 555 timer that we're using in this circuit click ok Okay, and let's change it there to 555. Another thing we can do is we can edit its transparency level. So if we right click on edit again, and we can pick alpha. So here we can say drop it like that. And then it should say make the chip sort of transparent so you can see the uh, tracks underneath it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the two uh, power cables onto the um, board. So we go to connectivity. And then for this, we're going to use hookup wire. So we click on the hookup wire, and then this brings a wire, which we can then just click onto one of the holes in the board. That's the first one. And then I'm going to go over again, click hookup wire again. And I should be able to bring another one over here. Okay, so I just click it. Now the only thing is, they're kind of the wrong color. So I'm going to click on the first one and right click it. And then I'm going to go edit selection. And then I'm going to pick a color. So for the power line, I'm going to make it red, click OK. And then this one, I'm going to make it black. So edit selection, choose the color, and then click black, click OK. Once you click away from it, it shows its proper color. OK, so these are our power lines. And we can also, we can manipulate these. So if we click on one end, we can, we can move it, and then we can we can change the shape of the wire like this by just moving the uh, little grab handles. Okay, so I'll just move this one up as well. And we're going to connect them to something a bit later on. So looking at these two wires, the first wire travels along the top of the board and it's connected to this track. So all along this track is connected to power. And then all along this track is connected to ground. Okay, so next I'm going to pick some of the easier things to do, and the easier things in this case would be the pins on the chip that are not connected to any other components. So if we look at our diagram, we can see that pin 1 is connected to ground. So pin 1 on this chip is the pin at the top left corner closest to the notch. 
So what I'm going to do is go to jumper. Okay, so this is uh, just a way of drawing a straight wire. And I'm going to connect that to uh, ground. So I'm just going to go somewhere along this track. I can connect to anywhere along this track. So I'm just going to pick here. And then I'm going to click and then drag my mouse down to the bottom line. And that has put in what represents a wire, essentially connecting pin one along the track here, and then down here into the zero volts or ground wire. So then we have pins eight and four are connected to the uh, power line or the plus say six volts in this case. So we get pin uh, four and we're going to connect that uh, up. Okay, so I'm going to get another jumper wire. So I'll just click it again. And this time pin four, we're going to across from pin four. And I'm going to click up this time and I'm going to bring it up to the power line. And that's that one done. So the next one I want to do is pin eight. So pin eight is over here because when we have a chip, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to go from here and I'm going to connect that up to power as well. Next, I'm going to put in uh, R1. That's the resistor, the one kilo ohm resistor. So to do that, I'm going to connect it from pin seven, which is here. and That's going to go up to uh, six volts. So to get a resistor, then we have to go down to passive. And under passive, we have a selection. So here's resistor. Now there's lots of different variants that we could use. Um, so we can have a look and we can go pick any one of these. So typically I often use um, quarter watt carbon film. So that's what I'm going to go with. And then I'm going to do it from pin seven. So if I come out a couple, just give me some space. And then I click here, and then I bring it up to six volts. So there's my resistor put in. So if we right click the resistor and then we can go to edit selection, we can choose uh, the value. So in this case, it's a one kilo ohm. So it's like K for kilo ohms. And I'm just going to move this over so you can see it. So I select K for kilo ohms. And then we just put in a value of one. And then we can go, OK. It will actually draw in the resistor color code for us as well. We can see in the diagram that pin, uh, or sorry, the resistor R1 is also connected to resistor R2 just about here. And then resistor R2 is also connected to a capacitor a little bit lower down. So let's put them in. So we need to get another resistor. So I click on resistor again, and it will tend to stick with the last variant we selected. So I'm going to put it over just about here, and then I'm going to bring that resistor down to about here. Now at the moment it's showing the resistor is kind of uh, sticking up vertically. So I'm just going to right click it and go edit selection. And I'm going to change the length of it a little bit. So maybe point three. Click OK. And now it fits a little bit better on the diagram. So this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So we will just click it and then select edit and we'll put in the value. So we're going to select K for kilo ohms and then 10 and then OK. And then it puts in the correct values here. So the next thing we want to do then is we want to just check that the variant is the correct one. So we were working with carbon film a quarter watt. So now we have the right type. OK, but because I've changed it, it's also gotten rid of the values for me. So I just need to go and edit those again. And I'm going to change it to K and put in 10. And click OK. All right, so now it looks kind of similar to the other one. Just the color codes are different. Next, we're going to put in a capacitor. So the capacitor in this case is a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And if we look over here on the left-hand side, you have electrolytic capacitor axial type, and then you have electrolytic capacitor radial type. You also have film capacitors as well. I'm just going to pick the electrolytic capacitor for this example. So I click here, and then I can bring it across. Now, what happens when we draw it? Um, we can just see here, so I'm just going to click here. And once we start drawing it, it starts to draw a circle. And you can see that if I click, 
then that shows the two pins where they would be going through the board. Okay, so that works fine for me. And um, we can also edit it if we want. We can edit the selection. We can change the name if we want. We can put in the value. So we can put in uh, microfarads, and then we can put in 0 0.1. Click OK. Okay, so it's you don't really see the value there, but we can see uh, on the circle there's a negative side of the capacitor. It's very important with electrolytic capacitors that we put them in the right way around, or they might blow up. So the other side of the capacitor, the negative side of the capacitor, should be connected to ground. So for that, we're just going to go to connectivity again select a jumper and then just click here because this anywhere along here is on the same track so click here and then just drag it down to ground okay so we've got quite a few components connected up now so if we look more closely at our circuit diagram for a second we can see that pins six and two are connected together on our chip so we need to route those next we can also see that pins 6 and 2 are connected to one end of R2, the 10K resistor, and C1 there, the capacitor. So we need to find a way to get them to not only join up with each other, but also to intersect at this point. So it looks like the best way to do that is to get our jumper again. And this time we're going to connect to pin 2 on our chip. So let's click here. And what I'm going to do is bring it down to this point. This point here happens to intersect with the correct end of the resistor and also the correct side of the capacitor from our diagram. But we still have to get it to join up uh, with pin uh, 6. So to do that, we just uh, select the jumper wire again, and then we go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's pin 6, so click here, and then we can drag it down, and it connects then to the same track. So pin 2 and pin 6 are connected to this track, which is also connected to the resistor, and it's connected to this capacitor here. So next we need to connect uh, our transistor into the circuit, and resistor 3. So resistor 3 is connected to pin 3, which is the output pin of our 555 timer, and that connects to our transistor. So in this case, it's an NPN transistor. And you can see the collector of the transistor is connected to 6 volts. So if we position it somewhere near the top of the board, it should be easy to connect the collector to 6 volts. Okay, so let's find our transistor. So we go over to semiconductors again on the left-hand side. And from here, we can pick a couple of different types of transistors, uh, the TO1 type and the TO92 type. So I'm going to pick the TO92 type for this particular example. So if we move our transistor up here, we should be able to connect it more easily to the 6 volts. Now, depending on the type of transistor you have, it may be placed in this um, orientation, or it may be placed the other way around. So this particular one, which is a KSP2222A, um, has to be positioned the other way around. So if I just click it onto the board, then there's two things I need to do. First, the pin spacing is not correct on this. If we actually zoom in on this board a little bit, and I'll just move it a bit, and we can see that there's there should be three pins here, but one of the pins is going into the space between the tracks. So that's not going to work very well. So I'm just going to zoom it back out a bit and put it back into position. Maybe zoom in one more time. And then what we're going to do is just change the way the transistor is laid out. So we right click on the transistor, then go to edit selection, and change the pin spacing from 0 0.05 of an inch to 0 0.1. And now our pins are set up correctly so that they match up with the tracks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform the selection and rotate clockwise, and then I'm going to rotate clockwise again. And so now my transistor is facing the correct way around. So in this particular transistor, this is the collector. This middle pin is the base, and this pin here is the emitter. So the output of the 555, which is coming from pin 3, is connected to our transistor's base using a resistor. 
So in this case, the resistor is R3. So again, we go up to uh, passive and we select a resistor. Now if we right click it, we can select our variant. So we're going to go for a quarter watt carbon film. And then we're going to draw our resistor going from here up to our base. So then we can right click it again and then we can edit and we can just put in the value. So this is a 1K resistor. So if it's like K, select one, click OK. Next, we have to connect our LED into our circuit. So the LED is fed from the output of the emitter, which goes through a 330 ohm resistor R4, and then into our LED and then into ground. So first we want to get our LED. So if we go back down here to semiconductors, we can select an LED. And I'm just going to put the LED located right here. So I just clicked on where the anode will go and then just click again where the cathode will go. And you can see it has a flat edge to it. Okay, and you can change the color as well if you want. You can edit the selection and you can change the color, but I'm just going to leave it at green. So what we need to do now is connect up the a resistor from the emitter of the transistor here. So again, go to our um, resistors and you'll find them here. Select variant. So we just go with a quarter watt carbon film. And then we're going to go with, all right, just zoom out a bit there. So we're just going to go with putting it in here. So I'll just zoom in a bit. And reposition it a little bit there. Okay, so you have to select the same track that the emitter is on. Click and then bring it down to where our LED is. And we can just click right here. Okay, so that is our four. So we just need to put in the value then. So right click and we go edit. And then this time it's going to be single ohms. And we're going to put in 330 of those. And we get our color code again. So this is our four. So that's pretty much it. That's our circuit. We have our our LED. We have our resistors. We have our transistor, our main chip, and so on. There are a couple of other things we still need to do, though. You might remember earlier in the video I mentioned that we have to cut the tracks underneath our uh, chip, otherwise it's going to have it's basically going to be shorted out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this over here for a second. And then I'm going to use the track cutting tool, which is over here on the left hand side, or trace cut. OK, so we click click that and then we can click here and we click it again and we click here and we click it again and click here, click it again and click here. Now we can click our chip again and we can move it back. And those tracks have now been cut. So there's no link between this side of the circuit here and this side of the circuit here with those tracks that are cut. It's very important to make sure that you do cut the tracks or you could end up ruining your chips when you test out your circuit. By the way, folks, if you don't like using a white background, you can go to your uh, config and then you can go to a uh, theme and you can change it to one of a number of ones. So you could have blueprint or you can go to theme and you can select dark. So I'm just going to pick dark for this and then I'm going to turn off uh, just going to zoom out a little bit and then what we can do is we can um, actually we can remove the um, little diagram there and then i'm just going to put in a few finishing touches to the circuit so first we're going to put in a title um, so what we need to do is just tidy these up a little bit and then we need to find uh, things like uh, labels so under miscellaneous um, we have labels so we can pick one of these and then we can move it around and wherever we click is where it's going to go. So I want to put in one for plus nine or plus six volts. So I'm going to click here, double click to edit. So I'm just going to put in plus six volts. And then we are going to go OK. Now, the only problem is the text is black, which is a little bit difficult to see on a black background. So we can highlight the text. We can go to edit selection. 
and then we can pick the color. So I'm just going to pick white. Click OK. Click OK. And then once we click away from it, um, you can see it clearly. So I'm just going to move it over there. And then I'm going to put in some more text at the bottom. So just click on label again. Just go down here. Double click to edit. Click the color this time. Pick white. Click OK. And then just put in zero volts. Yeah, we'll just move that over there. Now I'm just going to put a title up near the top. So I'll just move this a little, and then I'm going to put in um, some more text. Now we could use PCB text if we want, but that's going to be backwards. So we probably won't use it in this situation. So to get rid of that, just press delete, and then go to ABC label and click our label here so this time we're going to pick white again click ok and this is going to be a little bit bigger so maybe about 24 and then we're going to put in 555 flasher circuit click and vertical alignment just going to keep that uh, fine that's vertical alignment is fine horizontal alignment though i'm going to make the left Click OK, and then I'm just going to move it over here like that. So there's our title at the top. We have our zero volts and our six volts and our zero volts. So next, I'm just going to put in the details of each of the different components. So the first one is Q1. So again, put in a label and we're going to click here. And we're just going to say Q1 equals KSP 2222A transistor. And I'm just going to align it left and make sure it's white. Okay, and then I'm going to just put in some of the other uh, names. Um, I'm just going to pause the video while I do that. Okay, so next, just for a couple of finishing touches, uh, what I want to put in is, uh, first of all, a 9-volt battery snap, just to show a sort of typical battery connector you can put in here. So this is one here, and I'm just going to move it over here a little bit, because what I want to do is also put in um, a switch. So we're going to put a switch in. So I'm just going to connect this. So with these these points you can drag them over and they sort of will snap to a certain point on the battery snap so we can just move that to there and then what I want to do is make a switch that I'm going to use for connecting from this wire to the battery snap so there are switches um, in DIY layer creator but they're not really the kind of ones I want because if I bring that out it doesn't really look like what I want it to look like so what I'm going to do instead is just press delete to get rid of that and then I'm going to draw one instead so to do that go to shapes and then we have uh, rectangles here so I'm going to use a few rectangles to draw something so just click on the rectangle and then you get sort of a shape like this and then what I can do is I can shrink it or make it bigger or smaller so I'm going to go at about that size and then I'm going to do a couple more rectangles so just click away from the shape and then click it again and then you can click here I'm going to make these ones a lot smaller. And then I'm going to press Control C to copy that, and then Control V to paste in a second one. So I'm going to move these up here. And these are going to represent the two connectors on my switch. And then I'm going to do another rectangle. So this one's going to be smaller. And I'm going to put this one here like that. And then I'm going to do one more shape. So that's going to be a polygon. So I'm going to take this polygon and I'm going to shape it like this until it sort of makes a diagonal shape like that. And then what I'm going to do is put it here. And I'm going to move it down a step. And I'm going to right click it. 
and then I'm going to transform it. So I'm going to send backwards, and that just puts it behind the other things that I've drawn. So next, then we can just change the color of these. So I'm going to select this. And I'm going to make this red. So edit selection. I just click the color. So I'm going to pick red. And oh yeah, I forgot that was just the outline I made red. So I'm just going to edit that again, and we're going to pick the actual color as well. So here and red. Click OK. OK, so that's that. Then I'm going to uh, just change the color of these to make them look slightly more metallic. So I right click and select edit again. And I'm going to pick color. I'm going to pick kind of a dark gray. Click OK. And then what I want to do is I want to take these two. These would be metal connectors on the switch itself. So what I'm going to do is in order to be able to connect wires to them, what I need to do is go to connectivity on the left hand side and select dot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just position the dot. Now the problem is the dot won't go where I want it to go just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to config and snap to grid and set that to none. And then I can move the dots wherever I want. So I'm just going to put that one there, pick another dot and put this one here. And then I can go back to snap to grid again. So next, I just want to call this an on off switch. So what I need to do is go to labels and just type on off. And change the color of the text to white. Click OK, OK. And then I can move this up here. Now it's also gone behind the uh, box, so I just need to select it and then we need to transform and bring forward and then this should i can just slide this back okay so there's my on off switch and if i want i can move it around but i'm not too worried about that so the next thing i want to do is i want to select it all like this and now what I can do is I can right click it and I can save as building block. So when I go to save as building block, I get a little option here. I can call this on off switch. I click OK. Now I can um, use these components wherever I want. So if I want to get another one, I can go up here to building blocks and I can select on off switch and it will position another one there for me. So the next thing I want to do is just move my on off block. Okay. Like this and put it there and then I can click on my wire and I should be able to drag it to this point here. And then I can bring in another wire wire and I can bring it from here to here like this. So I want to click that there and I'm just going to maneuver that around a little bit to make it look a bit neater. Now as you can see these uh, wires are not quite clicking on the right spots here because when I created this switch the uh, these little tabs here were not really in the right position. So what I can do is I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to go back to my original one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the little tabs. And I can use the uh, arrow keys to do that. But you see, they're moving according to the grid. All right, so I'm just going to turn off the grid for a second. So snap to grid, none. And then I can move these so that they are more like this. And then I can click on a particular little dot and position it about here. And then this one. Move the dot again, and position it about here. And it should be easier to connect to those now. 
So I'm just going to select all this again, making sure not to select that wire there. And then I can move it around. And then I'm going to right click it and go save as building block. And just call it on switch to. Okay, so now if I go over here, you can see here I can drag it in and I can position it wherever I want. So I'm just going to put it here and then I can drag this wire and now it snaps to the right point. Okay, and same with this one, I can bring this around a bit, I'm going to modify those curves a little bit, bring it back here. And now our switch is in place. The only thing is this wire is green, so we need to change that. So we'll just edit this, change it to red, click OK. And finally, we're done. OK, we have our battery. You can get rid of this now, actually. So I'll just get rid of that. So we have our battery connector. We have our switch. We have our board. We have our text. So everything is pretty much done. So once you're happy with your design, if you like, you can export to two pdf or to a png image um, which you can put into documents if you want or another alternative if you don't want to export like that is you can also press the windows shift and s keys which will then allow you to select an area and then you can drag your mouse across that area and you can then copy that to the clipboard so that image has now been copied to the clipboard, and if I want to, I can just open up a document and I can press Control V and it pastes in my image. Finally, don't forget to save your file. So just go to File, Save As, and give it a name. So 555 Flasher, and save. And there you go, that's your, your file saved. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to smash that like button. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.